Hello guys, in this tutorial video, we will talk about how to define the line element in OpenDSS. Let's start with a three-phase line model with neutral, connected between two buses, which will be called K and L. The phase conductors are connected to the nodes 1, 2 and 3, and the neutral conductor is connected to node 4 of each bus. In this example, we are assuming that the neutral is not grounded. If it was the case, you would have to connect the neutral conductor to the node 0 of the bus in which we want to ground it. The self-impedances of each conductor will be called as ZAA, ZBB, ZCC, and ZNN, and the mutual impedances will be called according to the conductors which they are related to. For example, between conductor A and B, we have ZAB, and between C and N, we have ZCN, and so on. In OpenDSS, the line is modeled by using the pi model, in which we split the total line's capacitance and consider half of it at the beginning and the other half at the end of the line, for both self and mutual capacitance, as you can notice. Mathematically, the software deals with this model considering two distinct matrices, one for the series impedances and one for the shunt admittances. In order to define the series impedance matrix, let's label the nodes of each bus connected to the phase A as VA1 and VA2, the currents in the series branch as IA, and the voltage drop in phase A as delta VA. We can say that delta VA is equal to VA1 minus VA2, that is equal to ZAA times IA plus ZAB times IB plus ZAC times IC plus ZAN times IN. Similar expressions can be found for the other three conductors. We can group these equations and write them in matrix form as delta VA column vector equals matrix Z times the current column vector, where Z is a 4x4 four four matrix and it's symmetrical. Furthermore, we know that each impedance has real and imaginary parts. Then, we can say that the self-impedance of a generic conductor I is ZII equals to RII plus JXII. For the mutual impedances between two generic conductors I and J, we can say that ZIJ is equal to RIJ plus JXIJ. Know that RIJ may be a non-zero value if any earth model is considered, for example, if we consider Carson's equation. Then, we can split the series impedance matrix Z into two matrices, one for the resistances and the other for the reactances. Like the Z matrix, the R matrix is symmetrical as well. You can declare the lower triangle straight to open the SS. The same applies to the reactance matrix. Note that these parameters must be given in ohms per unit length, because the length is defined in a specific parameter, as we will see later. Now, for the shunt admittance matrix, we can build the matrix applying the inspection method, where the elements in the main diagonal are the sum of the capacitances connected to the respective node. As an example, the first element of the matrix is the sum of CAA plus CAB plus CAC plus CAN. Keep in mind that OpenDSS divides the value of the capacitances by 2 due to the pi model in its internal algorithm. And the elements out of the main diagonal are the mutual capacitances between the respective nodes, with a negative sign. Like in the R and X matrices, we can declare the lower triangles directly in OpenDSS. In this case, the capacitance's unit must be in nanofarads per unit length. Let's define a three-phase line with neutral in OpenDSS. I'll start cleaning the circuit and define a circuit element connected to the bus K. The name of our line will be example 1. It has four phases. Note that the number of phases in the line definition includes the neutral. Its first terminal will be connected to the bus K and the second to the bus L. The length equals to 1 and it's given in kilometers. However, if we let the name of the buses with only a name, in this case, K and L, OpenDSS will understand it as the default connection, which the phases A, B, and C connected to the nodes 1, 2, and 3 of the respective bus, and the last phase, which is the neutral, connected to the node 4, which means that it would be not grounded. Then, 
Let's add the nodes in which the phases are connected to. In bus k, the neutral is grounded. Then, we must define the bus 1 as k.1.2.3.0 in order to have the neutral grounded. And for the second bus, we can declare it as l.1.2.3.4. I will use some predefined series impedance and shunt admittance matrix here. Note that I am declaring only the lower triangle as I said a few seconds ago. Now, solving the example, we can check the lines parameters in the form edit. As you can see, the R matrix, X matrix and C matrix are equal to what we have defined. If we use the command damp, the name of the line plus debug, we can check all the parameters shown in the form edit table, but also a few more data. For example, we can see the Y primitive matrix of this line split in a G matrix and a B matrix. These matrices are quite important and there is a specific tutorial video for them called Y matrix and Y primitive in OpenDSS. Let's understand the Y primitive for this example. As I mentioned before, OpenDSS considers the pi model of the line which means a series impedance and half of the mutual and shunt capacitance of the line in each terminal. In a single phase representation, if we apply the inspection method, we can say that the Y primitive is equal to a 2x2 two two matrix, where the elements in the diagonal are equal to Y plus YC, and the elements out of the diagonal are equal to minus Y. In our case, we have three phases and a neutral. It can be deduced that we can still consider the inspection method. However, Y and the YC in the Y prime matrix are not a single element anymore. They must be substituted by matrices, where the matrix Y is the inverse of the series impedance matrix and the YC matrix is the shunt admittance matrix times J times omega over 2 to convert the capacitances to admittances and divided by 2 due to the pi model. We can break the Y primitive into a G primitive plus JB primitive. Then, as YC matrix is constituted only by susceptances, G primitive is formed only by the conductances derived from the inverse of the Z matrix. And B primitive has its diagonal 4x4 blocks constituted by the sum of the susceptance matrix derived from the inverse of the Z matrix and the susceptance matrix from the shunt admittance matrix. To verify this, let's take the first element of the B primitive matrix of our line in OpenDSS. It's BAA plus omega CPA divided by 2, and it is equal to minus 1.81377845. As we define the line with a length of 1 km, the unit is Siemens, or 1 over ohm. We also have the value of BAA, because according to the B primitive matrix, it should be the opposite of the element connected between the first node of buses K and L. Then BAA is equal to minus 1.81378505. Isolating omega CPA over 2, we find that it is equal to 0 0.50 followed by 176. We can verify this value because we know that CPA is the first element of our shunt admittance matrix and it is equal to 9.34 nanofarads because our line has a length of 1 km. As our basic frequency is 60 Hz, we get that omega CPA over 2 is equal to 0 0.50 followed by 176, exactly the same value that we got from the B primitive matrix as expected. Now, Let's consider a three-phase line without neutral. In this case, we have essentially the same matrices, but now, as there are three nodes in each bus, the Z matrix will be a 3x3 three three matrix, which can be broken into R matrix and X matrix, and be defined in OpenESCS with the lower triangle as well. The same can be said about the shunt admittance matrix. In OpenDSS, in this case, as there are three phases only, we can delete the nodes from the line's bus definition. However, I would like to discuss with you the fact that 
we can specify any connection between the conductors and the bus nodes. For example, bus 1 equal to k.2.1.3 and bus 2 equal to l.3.2.1. What does this connection mean exactly? As any power delivery element in OpenDSS, a line is described by its Y primitive matrix. In this example, we have a line with three phase conductors, called as phases A, B, and C. Then, it has two terminals with three nodes each. It's important to understand that once the R matrix, X matrix, and C matrix are defined, the line's Y primitive doesn't change anymore. Then, when bus 1 is defined as K.2.1, Dot three, we are saying that at the line's first terminal, the first conductor is connected to the bus node 2, the second conductor is connected to the bus node 1, and the third conductor is connected to the bus node 3. The same principle applies to the second terminal. If we define the bus 2 as L.3.2.1, we are basically saying that the first conductor is connected to the bus node 3, the second conductor is connected to the bus node 2, and the third conductor is connected to the bus node 1. Now, you might be asking yourself, OK, but if Y primitive is fixed, how does this node definition will affect the power flow solution? The answer is, Y primitive doesn't change. However, the Y matrix, which is the nodal admittance matrix of the entire system, will be affected. And there is the difference. If you want further information about the Y matrix, you should watch the tutorial video called Y matrix and Y primitive in OpenESS. So, coming back to OpenESS and using the default definition, by solving the secret, we can verify that in this case, the Y primitive matrix is a 6x6 six six matrix because we have two terminals with three conductors each. That gives us a total of six nodes. Now, if the line we want to model is a three phase transposer line, we can say that the self impedance of each phase is the same. Yes, and the mutual impedances are equal and will be called as ZM. The same is valid for the capacitances, where the self-capacitance will be named as CP and the mutual will be named as CM. In this situation, the series impedance matrix is the following. If we apply the transformation for symmetrical components, we get that the Z012 matrix has three decoupled elements where the first one is ZS plus 2ZM and the other two are equal to ZS minus ZM. The three impedances of this matrix are also called as zero sequence impedance or Z0, positive sequence impedance or Z1, and negative sequence impedance or Z2. We can break Z0 into R0 plus JX0 and Z1 into R1 plus JX1 and use these values to define a three-phase transposed line in OpenDSS. As the negative sequence impedance is equal to the positive, R2 and X2 are implicitly defined by R1 and X1. The same transformation can be applied to the shunt admittance matrix, where a similar result can be found, and we can use C0 and C1 to define the shunt admittance matrix. Then, let's define a transposed three-phase line in OpenDSS and solve. As you can see, the sequential parameters R0, R1, X0, X1, C0, and C1 are equal to what we have defined. Note that OpenDCS has calculated the R matrix, X matrix, and C matrix for us, according to the sequential parameters. Now, let's consider a single phase line model with neutral. For example, assume that the line is connected between buses L and M and the neutral conductor is grounded at bus L. This line can be connected to a single phase transformer in which the secondary winding is center tapped, for example. Furthermore, let's add a load at the end of the line. As in this case there are only two conductors, there will be only two self impedances and one mutual impedance. Like the other two cases that we have seen before, the pi model also applies for this one. Then. Half of the capacitances are represented at the beginning of the line and the other half is represented at the end. To define the series impedance matrix, we have to do the same process. Applying KVL, considering only the series impedances, we can say that delta VA is equal to ZAA times IA plus ZAN times IN 
and delta Vn is equal to Zan times Ia plus Znn times In. Then, writing these equations in matrix form and breaking into real and imaginary parts, we can find the lower triangle of the R matrix and X matrix directly in OpenDSS. And for the Shanta Dimitas matrix, we can apply the spectral method again and declare the C matrix in OpenDSS. In this example, I will use a predefined transformer and load. You can get more information about how to define a transformer and a load in the tutorial videos Transformer Element and Loads, respectively. In this case, our line has two phases. Remember that the neutral has to be included in the phases parameter. Its first terminal is connected to the bus L.1.0 because the neutral is grounded, and its second terminal is connected to the bus M.1.0 because the neutral is not grounded. I will copy some predefined values for the matrices here. Remember that in this case, each matrix has only three elements. Now, solving the power flow, let's check some results. For example, the current in the elements. As you can see, the current that flows into the load through node 1 is the opposite of the current that flows into the load through node 4, as expected. And these two currents are the opposite of the currents flowing into the line through the nodes 1 and 4, respectively. Another result that we could verify is the line ground voltage by bus and node. As you can see, as the neutral is not grounded at the load, its voltage is close to zero, but not zero, due to the voltage drop across the line. Now, suppose that we want to model a single phase line without neutral. In this case, we must connect the load between the node connected to the line and node zero, which is the ground. Otherwise, there wouldn't be no path for the current flow. In this situation, as there are no either mutual impedances or mutual capacitances, R matrix, X matrix, and C matrix become a single element. Remember that the pi model will be considered, and the capacitance CAA will still be split, like in the other examples. In OpenDSS, our line has only one phase now, and its first terminal is connected to the node 1 of bus L, and the second terminal is connected to the first node of bus M. Let's add some predefined values for the matrices. Note that the load's bus1 definition equal to M.1 means that the second node is grounded by default. By running the script, again, you can verify the connections through the current in elements, and also through the dump command. Notice that the line's Y' matrix is a 2x2 two two matrix, because in this situation, the line has only two nodes. Finally, with the same center tap transformer, suppose that you want to supply a load with a line-to-line -line voltage. In this case, a line with two conductors is needed. This line has its first terminal connected to the nodes 1 and 2 of bus L, and its second terminal connected to the nodes 1 and 2 of bus M. The same applies to the load's connection. For this line, R matrix, X matrix, and C matrix become a 2x2 two two matrix. Then, in OpenDSS, the line's first terminal is defined as L.1.2, the second terminal as M.1.2, and the load's bus1 parameter is defined as M.1.2 as well. 